All right, so today it's all about the pork belly and taking that and making it into bacon. I want to stop for a minute and uh, dedicate this to my grandparents, my dad, and my uncles. Um, my grandparents owned a custom butcher shop where they used to go out and harvest uh, the animals from people's ranches and farms and stuff. And then they would bring it back to the shop and cut it. Uh, cut it to their specifications and everything wrap it freeze it they even had uh, cold storage in the back so people didn't have to own freezers back then because uh, my grandparents owned the freezer and they would have a locker for every person every customer so you can rent the locker and just keep your your meat there so anyway i grew up um, with smoked and cured meats as a kid, I really didn't care too much about it. I loved eating it. I was spoiled that way. But as far as making it, so I don't have those old recipes and I wish I did. Uh, I was around my dad when he was making it. My dad was a high school ag teacher and he also taught product and processing. So I was around it all the time. My dad was always curing meat and making it for uh, the kids at school and um, faculty and staff and and all of his friends the one thing I didn't pay attention to was the recipes uh, so I kind of wish I had some of those old recipes today but I don't and now that they're past uh, my dad's past and my grandparents I don't have those old recipes so I don't want to make that mistake with my daughter um, so I started a cookbook this, this actually four years ago. One of those recipes uh, in that cookbook is going to be my bacon. Uh, I post it all the time on my Facebook and people are always asking me. So I'll, this is going to be a real simple dry rub. This is our recipe. Uh, my dad and family used to do a wet brine and this is going to be a dry brine and it works for us and the flavor is incredible uh, and it's super simple so here we go to making bacon so this is a super simple recipe it's all dry ingredients well except for the molasses but it's salt pepper garlic smoked paprika brown sugar and pink curing salt. You can get the pink curing salt at the grocery store or on Amazon. But I have molasses and the key ingredient here for me is powdered maple syrup. So this is powdered maple syrup. So the bacon we're making today is going to be a maple bacon. Um, to me that pork fat with the sweetness of the maple, it is incredible. So I'm having a little bit of brain fog this morning. I'll write the, the amounts down in the description below so you can uh, duplicate this, this particular recipe. All the dry ingredients um, I put in one bowl first, except for the brown sugar. So what we got here is the pink salt, granulated gar garlic, paprika, pepper, the maple uh, powder, and then underneath is the salt. And all I'm going to do is just mix this up, make sure that they're really good and mixed. But the brown sugar and the molasses, what I like to do is put the molasses in with the brown sugar and mix it up real good so that you don't get these big clumps of molasses or, or whatever it just makes it easier 
to incorporate into this dry and it, you don't get this big clump. So that's all going to go in there. I'm going to mix this up some more. Make sure there's no clumps. I got a couple little balls in here. Just break those up. And then add the brown sugar and molasses to this. Mix this up real good. As soon as I get this mix, I'll come back and show you the rest. All right, well, that takes a little bit um, to get mixed in and get mixed in well. You want everything to be mixed really well. That's, that's real key here. Um, so with that molasses in there, it makes it a little bit harder uh, to get everything, but just keep kneading at it. You'll get it to look like this. And you're ready to go. So all I'm going to do is take this dry rub and make sure I get it all over the pork belly. I'm going to rub it in. Make sure you get the sides. And all you want to do is just, just get it on there. Because we're going to put it in a bag and let it sit for four days. So what this dry rub is going to do is pull out all the moisture, all the water that's in there, and, and leave you th that beautiful muscle and fat behind. So that's the whole thing about curing. You're trying to draw out uh, that moisture and add some flavor to it. So from here, I'm just gonna put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna do it a couple different ways this time. I didn't have enough Ziploc bags, and I've kind of been wanting to try this to see if it makes a difference in the carrying process. But I'm gonna do two in Ziploc bags, like we normally do it. And then I'm gonna do two in vacuum seal bags without vacuum sealing them. So it's, it'll be basically the Ziploc bag and then two uh, vacuum sealed. So let's go do that now. All right, well, I ran into a little minor difficulty while I was processing this. Uh, I lost all power for about an hour. So I did some cleanup, got everything vacuum sealed and in, in bags. And, and I'll show you right now because it's only been an hour. Actually, as soon as I got them in the bags, the moisture from the, the pork bellies already started coming out. And that dry rub was pulling out that moisture into the bags already. So you'll see how quick it works um, as soon as you start putting that dry rub on. But here, I'll show you. So I told you, you don't have to do a vacuum seal. A regular Ziploc bag uh, will work. Uh, I just happen to have a vacuum sealer and these ones here are vacuum sealed and you can see there's there's fluid in there already I didn't put any extra fluid in there that's all the moisture being drawn out of the pork belly what we'll do is we'll put these in the refrigerator for for four days they recommend to flip them uh, every couple of days depending on how long your brine is my brine I let it sit for four days. Uh, I have a particular taste I like, and a lot of them say to go to seven days, six to seven days. To me, it's too salty. At that point, um, we've tried 24 hour brine, we've tried four day brine, six day brine, seven day brine. Four days is like the perfect time for letting them sit in the brine. You still get that nice flavor, you get the saltiness to it, but it's not overpowering in salt. After five days, that salt kind of takes over, and I really want that maple 
and smoky flavor from my bacon. So four days is, is like the perfect amount of time for them to sit. So what we'll do is we'll come back uh, in four days and I'll show you the rinsing and what I do next. And what I like to do um, to put them in the refrigerator is I've got these smaller pans. Uh, I stick them in the smaller pan because sometimes these bags will leak. It's a hit and miss. Even these vacuum seal bags will leak sometimes because um, it either didn't get a good seal or I hit them with something. But I like to try to put them in these pans so if they do leak, it's not all over the refrigerator. So I'll just stick them in here. In fact, I could probably just put them all on one tray. Yeah. It's perfect. So yeah, I'll stick them in the refrigerator like this for four days. When I come back, I'll show you the rest. I can't wait till four days is up and we can start smoking. All right, so we are at day four of the making a simple bacon, a maple bacon, and at day two, I went into the refrigerator, I rotated them, just flipped them upside down, and they were starting to firm up, and the juices were flowing. And like I said, that's why I put them on the, the trays, because there's so much fluid, one of those bags is gonna leak. The vacuum seal bags, almost every one of them leaked, because it sucked the juice in between the seal. I won't do that again, I'll just put them in and seal them, not vacuum them. So I know that trick for next time. Each bag had about three quarters of a cup to a cup of fluid. So that's how much came out of each one of these um, pork belly pieces. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, it happens every time, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to preserve this meat and pulling out that fluid helps preserve the meat. Bacon curing is just one of those methods. I pulled all this out this morning, both both pork bellies. I got the one going uh, in the smoker because I have to do two batches. So I got it out, I rinsed them off, patted them dry, prepped them, and then put them in the smoker. And I'll show you that because what we'll do, it's been two and a half hours. I've been checking on them. They look perfect. And if they're ready, I'm going to pull those out and then show you me putting these ones in and talk about my smoker a little bit. All I did was cut the bags open, drain the fluid off, and then rinse them under cold water. Uh, I've got these cookie cooling racks. These are perfect. And the big sheets, I just let them sit on there and, and let the water run off. <clears throat> and then before I go to the next step, I'll just pat them and try to soak up as much of that moisture as we can. Uh, these have been sitting here for a little bit, coming to room temperature, and uh, so the fluid's been been draining off. So once they're drained off, they're ready for the smoker. I like a little bit of sweetness, and I really want that maple to to pop with my bacon. So what I do is I got two cups of brown sugar. And do you remember that uh, maple that I had? So it's one cup of the powdered maple syrup. Um, I, I absolutely love that stuff. So the powdered maple syrup is incredible for stuff just like this. So what I did was two cups of brown sugar, one cup of the powdered maple syrup, and I mixed it up real good. And I'm only going to coat the top. So when I put my stuff in the smoker, some people put the fat side up, let it come down, or the fat side down. I personally put fat side down so that smoke really hits, hits that first before burrowing over. And then the other thing is, I'm gonna put this brown sugar maple syrup mixture right on top of that meat. And once you get it in there, this meat's gonna start to sweat but I will tell you, with, 
with everything sweating and that moisture being pulled out of the bacon, a lot of this sugar and everything flows off and then will hit the bottom. So you're only getting a slight amount of sugar uh, and, and, and flavor by putting that. So everybody thinks, oh, you put that much sugar on there. Nah, you could put a ton more sugar on I could pile it up this high. 90% of it's going to go away. Actually, probably 95% 90, of it's going to go away. It just leaves a small, small thin layer on there. So that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the maple and brown sugar mixture on here and then we'll take it on out to the smoker. Alright, so that's ready and uh, let's take this out to the smoker. Uh, I have a Bradley biscuit smoker. I bought this, oh, yeah, probably 10 years ago. And this thing's still kicking. I really like this type of smoker, but it is limited to using only the, the biscuit type uh, smoker. But this is, you can control a lot better with this smoker, and you can cold smoke with it. Uh, because there is a heating element in there, plus there's a pad for the biscuits. This is what I talk about when I say biscuit smoker. These are small pressed biscuits of the type of wood. I happen to be using apple wood. I really like the apple wood for almost everything that I do. When I smoke, I don't want that huge, robust, spicy smoke. Uh, I want a mild smoke because I want to taste the flavor of the meat and, and what I'm doing. I don't want to be overpowered with smoke. I've had a lot of things that are overpowered with smoke. So I use the apple biscuits. Uh, it gives it a nice, uh, sweet, milder flavor. Uh, so this is my go-to. They do make elder, cherry, oak. They have a special blend. There's mesquite. So they do have a good variety. You are limited to buying only theirs. But I buy these big uh, 120 count of biscuits. This is 40 hours of smoking. This lasts me all year. Because each one of these biscuits is 20 minutes in the smoker. Um, so three biscuits, an hour. Six biscuits, two hours. And each one of mine, sometimes I don't smoke the whole two hours. I only want it to smoke for an hour, so I'll put three biscuits in. Uh, and then I'll just lay, let it sit there at the, the low heat. That's This is the type of smoker. There's pellet smokers out there that work really well. And some of those are a lot more versatile. At the type of a pellets you can get and you can mix match between brands and companies. Those are all good. But people always ask me what I'm using. I use the Bradley smoker with these, with these biscuits. I'm happy with it. It's lasted me a long time. And I do like that it's a cold smoker. So what that means is I can leave the element off and the pad that these biscuits sit on only heat, heats up enough to make this thing smoke. It's not heating up the whole thing. Just enough to make this smoke. It does get a little warm in there sometimes but depending on what you're trying to do. What I cold smoke is cheese. Um, yeah, you could put yourself a nice cheese in there and don't turn the heating element on, put the smoke in there and let it smoke for an hour. Some of the most incredible cheese you'll ever eat. So if you are looking at smokers, see if it can cold smoke because that just uh, opens up the variety of things you can do with your smoker. I'll put links of everything that I've got uh, here uh, in the description. So if you're interested, uh, like in the maple syrup, but anyway, I'll put the links down below for the stuff that I'm using. Yeah, let's just move on out to the outside and I'll show you the smoker. The one thing about these things you don't want to do inside your garage. Sorry about the dang uh, <laughs> roosters. But anyway, um, don't want to do it inside your garage because this thing puts out a lot of smoke and it'll cover, um, 
he'll fill your garage all the way. Don't they know I'm filming? So outside, I had to use my covered patio. I got an outlet right here and it's perfect. It's been sitting out here for four years uh, and, and it works just fine. Anyway, this is the hopper. <laughs> this is the hopper right here. Uh, you've put the biscuits in here for however many hours that you wanna uh, use. Just fill it up. Turn it on and there is a advanced on there so you can advance them in. But here we go. I got the stuff that we had on the inside sitting up here. I got our trays down here for the stuff coming out. The temperature, temperature right now, oh, 190. So let's get to it. I'm, I'm gonna open this up and you can see what's inside. So this is actually a four rack uh, smoker, but I put in a tray down the bottom because there is so much fat and moisture coming off of these. Um, it'll just leak out the bottom. Anyway, so this is perfect for one pork belly. See the color? It's nice and stiff and hard. That tells me it's it's ready to come off and rest. So let me get to doing that now, and we'll put the new uh, the new bellies in. This has a water bath on the bottom and the only reason it's there is uh, as those briquettes get burnt to a certain point after the 20 minutes uh, it pushes the well there it is it pushes the charcoal briquette right off into the water bath because once they get to a certain point uh, you could get a, a charcoal flavor and we don't want that that's the other good thing about these Bradley smokers uh, they don't let them burn to that charcoal point. So they just get pushed off into a water bath. So just fresh water. And put it underneath. And we're ready to go for another two and a half hours. All right, yeah, two more, two and a half more hours. I don't want to touch my camera now. All right, we're back in the kitchen. So I brought everything in and I put them on these cooling racks, kind of uh, blotted them off a little bit. I'm gonna sit here and let them come to room temperature before putting them in the fridge. And now we're back to this. They've been sitting long enough because I do want to show you one thing. The beautiful color, this mahogany color on this bacon, and the smells in here are incredible. Look at that bacon. Yeah, these is, and they're firm. They're nice and firm, so it's most of the moisture's out. I don't go too long. Some people go a lot longer. For us, this is perfect, and uh, you can eat this right away. Okay, so I, I gotta show you this because these are so beautiful. Um, before I put them in the refrigerator, because I'm gonna slice them tomorrow, 
uh, why they're if you're going to ham slice, it's better to do them when they're a little warm when they came off of the the smoker. At least that's my opinion. If I'm going to hand slice them, I do them when they're warm. And then I'll package them up in one pound packages. But I'm not going to do that. I, I got a little tiny slicer. Uh, and I'm going to run it through because I can get them just a little bit thinner. I know some people will want them a little thinner. Uh, and so I, I have to use my hand slicer because it, it's just too hard. It, it's a pain in the butt too. Now I told you in the beginning of the video, um, I dedicated this to my grandparents and my uncles and my dad and the one thing that they did teach me was making sure you got good knives everybody asked me what kind of knives you have and I use foresteners my grandparents my dad everybody had foresteners uh, they lasted a long time they were good steel they kept a real nice edge they were easy to straighten back up uh, but man, these things have lasted a long time. I'm going to tell you this one here is probably 60 years old. This one here, my skinning knife, this was my dad's and he gave it to me when I was probably 14 and I've had it ever since. I'm 50 now. Uh, and it's one of my best knives. I love this knife, Forstner. I just bought a new one. Uh, this is not a Forstner, this is an off-brand. I do like it, but it does not hold up an edge to these Forstners. Uh, Forstner's been bought out and now owned by Victronics. I don't get paid for any of this. So this is all from experience. So Victronics is now the new owner of Forstner. It's been like that for a long time. So if you're looking for a Forstner, go to Victronics. Um, it's a Swiss company and they make great steel but anyway those are my knives I'll leave a link for that too yeah so get yourself a good knife yeah they're so uneven I'm just gonna cut it off to start making it uniform and then what I do is all these end pieces that are kind of like this I cut them up into, into chunks and that's what I use for my pork fried rice. It's great. Nothing goes to waste. But look at that color. That's beautiful. Nice smoke. Everything's been penetrated real nice. And it, it's, it's, you can eat it like that. I'm not going to, uh, or just throw it in a pan but I will tell you with fresh bacon like this it doesn't cook the same as your store-bought bacon I don't know if it's because of the fat or what it is or the caramelization this is just there's not the impurities that you're gonna get so this is raw this beautiful homemade bacon when you put it in a pan you gotta watch it because it cooks a lot faster it doesn't cook the same way as regular bacon so it, it's gonna cook a lot faster and and you're gonna get more of a crust around the edges same thing in the oven it's gonna cook a little faster <laughs> if you want a great candied bacon I mean candy bacon do the same thing we put these trays on a or these racks on a tray and we'll fill these trays up with the sliced bacon and you know that maple brown sugar mixture? Put it on the top of this, literally. And put it in the oven, 350. You're gonna have the best candy bacon ever. This, this, ah, I wanna eat it so bad. Anyway, th that's how we do it. So like I said, uh, if you're going to hand slice it, usually when it's warm and set up like this, you can get some nice slices. I'm not perfect in slicing. 
this is good enough for my family. Some families it's not. <laughs> you know who you are. They give me crap all the time. That's why I'm slicing them a little thinner. So I'm trying to cut them thinner so she, it makes her feel better about uh, getting more bacon. <laughs> so we give each other crap all the time. If you're gonna, you can still hand slice it in the morning uh, once they're chilled. It's just the fat is uh, tight, tighter and it's, it's not oily like this. So right now is the best time because it don't stick to your blade. In the morning, it'll stick to your blade a little bit, a little harder to get through, uh, which is better for the, for the uh, electric slicer. We'll, uh, I'll come back tomorrow and show you my hand slicer. It's an old, a grandma, it was actually grandma's hand slicer, so uh, it's not the best in the world, but it works for us. So anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, today's the next day and they've been sitting in the fridge overnight and they're ready to go into the slicer. Um, some other people want them a little thinner so then I have to go to my slicer. Well you can see this is an old slicer. Uh, it's it's just a kitchen type, it's not an industrial type and my slabs of bacon won't go in there whole so I have to cut them in half which is fine too. Um, but You'll see, cutting them by hand, I can get them pretty thin, kind of. But they're not as even. I prefer it this way. So I'm just gonna make a pound, hand sliced. So there's a pound of bacon uh, hand sliced. What I'll do from here is just put them in a vacuum seal and then the freeze and they can pull them out anytime. I do package them in one pound packages. Uh, it's just easier. This is enough for, for my family to have a meal and or breakfast and then have a little bit of extra, kind of. So the rest of this, what I like to do is I make bacon bits. Uh, I'll cut this up into little bits. I'll make a pile because uh, all these ends, they're all irregular right now. Uh, here, and, uh, even on the end, you won't be able to get it just right. So I take all those end pieces uh, and I'll chop them up into, into bits. And then I'll also put those in uh, half pound bags. Perfect for making bacon bits for your salad or what we like to do, we, we did last night, was pork fried rice. Um, we threw a handful of the bacon in. These bits got them nice and warm, threw the rice in, and made pork fried rice. Best pork fried rice you can ever have is with fresh pork like this. So anyway, I'm gonna get to moving and uh, slice up the rest of this and I'll take you to the next step. All right, I'm back. Uh, got everything sliced and sitting here uh, on the trays. Doesn't that look beautiful? Uh, I just love this stuff. Anyway, um, so I did one pound increments. So each of these piles is one pound, except for here. There's a little bit of left, leftovers here is about four ounces. And then uh, these are the these are half pound. Um, of the chunked up ends. So this is stuff that I couldn't run through the slicer or even by hand because uh, it was everything was um, not squared up. So and that's what I do with them. I might even break these down into quarter pound um, bags, which I'll probably end up doing because a little, little easier. Yeah, a meal probably a quarter pound. But I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum seal all this and then I'll show you that when uh, we're all done. So like I said before, that slicer I was using was my mother-in-law's and grandmother's. It, it was old. It did work. Um, 
I'm used to using Hobarts. My dad had Hobarts and I missed out on getting a Hobart from him before him passing. So anyway, um, anybody who knows a good line on a good Hobart slicer, let me know. Or if somebody wants to sponsor one, that'd be great too. So I'm going to move on to vacuum sealing. Alright, well I finished up vacuum sealing. So this is what you got after two pork bellies. These are now ready for the freezer. So we'll put these in the freezer and take them out as needed. Um, but I do really like these food saver bags. Um, it, it's really good for long-term storage. Gets all that air out. I happen to have a, I guess it's a commercial bag sealer. It's separate. It makes things a little faster, especially if you're doing um, a lot of bags. Because if you put it through the machine, it goes through a sealing process and and everything. and it. It's loud, noisy, so I'm just fortunate enough I have one of these. Um, so all you're doing is sealing bags with this, no vacuum. I'll put a link in the description below on, on what I'm using. And the same thing with the food saver. Uh, I haven't seen this one on the market in a while. They have a newer one with a scale on it. But I always pick the ones that have the... Um, the hose attachment to them because I do use the hose attachment for uh, my vacuum jars and making vanilla and stuff. But anyway, I'll put a link to that too, the newer version. But yeah, that's how, how it is. That, that's all my steps from beginning to end. And I hope you all enjoyed this video uh, and learned something. Uh, I share the recipe with you. If you like my video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get the updates as I put them out there. Uh, and I really do appreciate everybody's comments and, uh, and support. So we'll see you on the next video.